Verticillium stripe was first discovered in Manitoba in 2014. Since then, we've found it all across Canada. Uh, we do experience yield loss and crop damage, which impacts a, a producer's bottom line. There's a few key diagnostic features that um, growers and agronomists should be looking for when scouting their canola fields. Verticillium stripe of canola is caused by the fungal species Verticillium longisporum. Disease symptoms in canola include leaf chlorosis, early ripening, stunting, and as the disease progresses, necrosis and shredding of the stem tissue. Once the plant is fully ripe, the stem peels to reveal tiny black microscrotia, which resemble ground pepper in appearance. These microscrotia remain on the plant stem and fall into the soil. Those in the stem are released in the soil as the stems decay. This particular pathogen is considered to be a soil-borne pathogen, and these microsclerotia can live in the soil for a long time. When you think about dispersal, in black leg or sclerotinia, there's air movement and airborne uh, inoculum movement. Now in this particular pathogen, it's a soil-borne pathogen, so it doesn't particularly eject uh, spores to the air. However, because the microsclerotia are so small, it is almost like a soil particle that moves with machinery, with uh, wind, high wind, and uh, tillage practices because you are moving the soil. So all those things that we know that uh, move the club root pathogen can be uh, accounted for in the uh, verticillium stripe pathogen as well. Verticillium stripe is a monocyclic disease, meaning it only goes through one cycle of the disease each year. However, if infected plants ripen prematurely, they can show significant yield reduction. Verticillium longisporum favors hot and dry conditions with air temperatures above 15 degrees Celsius. The optimum temperature for the disease growth is 23 degrees Celsius. The pathogen develops slowly when soil temperatures are 12 degrees Celsius or lower. Microsclerotia are present in the soil and dead plant tissue and root exudates stimulate the development. This is necessary to successfully infect the roots at the most susceptible location of the fast growing root tip. Research has shown that the flowering stage is when the canola plant is the most susceptible. The fungus can enter the vascular system by the root directly or through an opening in the root via the fungal hyphae. After the hyphae multiply in the root, hyphae in single cell spores called conidia are produced locally in the xylem and move through the vascular system of the plant to multiply. This prevents the regular flow and functionality of water and nutrients up to the plant tissues and eventually causing the xylem to plug, turn black, collapse and shrivel. The interference of water and nutrient uptake caused by verticillium stripe can cause the crop to show signs of stunting and premature senescence. When individual plants are closely observed, faint black vertical striping can be seen on the stems, which can appear dark and more obvious when rubbed. By peeling back the epidermis and the outer cortex of the stem, blackening can be seen on the inside of the stem and eventually microsclerotia later in the growing season. As the plant begins to senesce, the pathogen moves from the xylem into the surrounding non-vascular tissues where multicellular microsclerotia are formed in the dying tissue. Likewise, microsclerotia produced in the stem base and roots cause the tissues to turn gray, then black, and can cause the lateral roots to eventually break down. While the plant begins to show progressively more intense symptoms of the disease, the microsclerotia in the stems cause a peeling back of the stem epidermis. At this point, the stem may take on a shredded appearance and the microsclerotia will be released into the soil where they will rest until stimulated to germinate again. This fungus is very smart, okay? This fungus can produce the resting spore if the spore can survive in the soil for more than 10 years. So he can play a game with the farmers. You don't grow the crop I like, I don't germinate. Whenever you grow the crop I like, I germinate. So the fungus is very smart, they, they play a waiting game. 
from the project that we have in lab, I think there are two uh, main uh, findings that will help farmers in the future. We are hoping that the, uh, the source of the resistance we have identified, we will be able to provide those sources with uh, molecular markers to breeders so they could incorporate it in, in the commercial varieties so the farmers feel safer about uh, the varieties that they are using and they have some assurance. This disease is a real risk for canola and measurement like chemicals or biocontrol agents are not working well against uh, this pathogen. That's why maybe the best the most effective and environmentally safe uh, solution is to de develop resistant lines. So the first uh, step would be for the companies to know that their varieties or germplasm are having that resistance to verticillium. So once they know that, they take that and uh, develop their varieties, which will become the uh, varieties that will be available to the growers. So by doing that, the farmers will be having those varieties to grow uh, with verticillium resistance. And uh, when there are areas with high inoculum of verticillium, the likelihood of that variety still doing well and high yielding will be there. So that's the aim of our work. Some people, they don't really uh, have uh, experience on vericillium stripes, so they think, oh, I only have black leg, so I will just use resistant black leg resistant cultivars to probably control black leg. But actually, these are vericillium stripe. And uh, when, when summer's coming and the dry and hot weather conditions, that could have a vericillium stripe breakout. However, if you cut the cross-section area, you see there's kind of a black discoloration on the cross-section. You could do a longitudinal cut. That's when you can see the central uh, cylinder, like the xylem, turning into black. That's why you know you have verticillium. But if you only see the cortex turning into black, that's when you have black lag. So that's the way you could different these two diseases. In order to uh, minimize the disease, what I think the farmer should do is, number one, you have to do the proper crop rotation. Try to not to grow your canola after canola, you know, to have maybe every three, four years to have a crop rotation. The last thing I think very important is to do sanitation. So farmers, just like the club rules, farmers need to be very careful. Don't drive your machine around, particularly if you know this is the area already have identified as a vertisim type disease. Okay, so you have to clean your machine, get the last the soil clumps away, and then if possible, you use the steam to wash the machine very well. So right from the very beginning, if we can reduce the inoculum in the fields by using the methods of uh, germplasm testing and uh, looking for resistance and then use that in the breeding programs that's to the advantage of the industry and to the growers. Uh, because verticillium stripe is a soil-borne disease it's really important to sanitize equipment, minimize soil movement and also rotate your crops. For more information on verticillium stripe check out the canola encyclopedia which can be found on the canola council website.